going to start the presentation now. Um, it's a great turnout. Thanks for everybody coming out tonight. Uh, this is our second project for our downtown streetscape. Um, we have an agenda behind you that I'm going to go through right now. Um, Mayor Jeffrey Schelke is going to have a uh, presentation, or uh, uh, he's going to talk about the past and how we got to the streetscape the idea we have now. Uh, Bill McGrath, our city administrator, is going to talk about the streetscape process and the, and the committee we came through and come up with the neighborhoods um, that he's going to present to the different neighborhoods we came up to where we're going to have streetscape in the future. Um, and I'm going to introduce key personnel. I'm going to go through the scope of work for the project, um, go through the construction schedule, and then we're going to talk about business, public, and vehicle access on the project. That's one of our biggest concerns, and we're going to try to minimize impacts to the public and the business as much as possible. Um, then I'm going to go through the public parking for the project, the areas where it's at, and then where our project communication is and our, and our weekly meetings. We are trying to communicate with everybody as much as possible to make sure you know what's going on with the project and also bring into a, a, a meeting with the contractor so you can actually ask questions on a weekly basis. Um, and at the end, I'll open up for questions, uh, for general questions, and after that we can go to different stations if you have more specific questions, and you can ask them with people that are standing there from the city or from our consulting team or uh, from our contractor. So now I'd like to introduce Mayor Jeffrey Schelke. He's going to talk about the streetscape. Well, thank you very much. Uh, our project is, uh, I think, one that certainly is steeped in history. Uh, given the fact that if you were a resident of Batavia and you've got some memory to you, you can remember that uh, 37 years ago we did the first rendition on Wilson Street as far as uh, <clears throat> taking the, what we're about to unearth here again. We did the first chapter of it back in 1976 and 77. On that occasion it was a two-year project because it was uh, big enough that I, I don't think the city at the time knew what they were really getting themselves into. Uh, we, had, uh, we had an old bridge structure that was on Wilson Street right in front of where McDonald's and, uh, is currently located and part of the 76-77 project was the removal of a large portion of that bridge structure that was in the ground and then that was replaced. Uh, but what we found, uh, so I am told by those who were involved with it in 76 and 77, was is that the original utility systems in Batavia were put in starting with the electric about 1889 and that was followed by the uh, water system in 1893 and that was followed by the sewer system starting in about 1898 and the sewer system took a number of years to install that. That was something that was uh, interestingly not widely accepted initially because people had outhouses and whatever and they were didn't want to release that real quickly. So. The records indicate that our absorption of the sanitary sewer took a lot longer than the electric or the water system. But the water system that originally was put in starting in 1893 is obviously now 120 years of age. Uh, some of that was removed uh, 37 years ago when we did the first rendition on the Wilson, West Wilson Street. Uh, but Noel and the staff tells me that there are portions of it that appear to be still there. And when I say appears to be still there, because the problem we face as a city staff here is, is that going back into the 1890s when they did things, for whatever reason, they didn't do a real good job of leaving us plans and specifications and diagrams and engineering as to where all this stuff was put into place and where it was and where it wasn't. And so some of this over the years has been a kind of a guessing game on the part of the city uh, because suddenly we'll, hit a we'll get a water break coming out of the ground and somebody will say, well, gee, where did this come from? And we find out that here's a little water main that we had no records of. And so uh, what this is going to do, I think, at long last is uh, probably replace any of the 120-year-old water main that still may exist in that general area. And that's one of the issues we have to have because there obviously we have to go into the ground to excavate and pull all that out. Uh, as I explained to a number of people over the years, a lot of what we do in Batavia is, is related to history and in some respects we have a lot of history recorded and others we don't. And in the installation of the utility network in Batavia, we don't have a lot of history left to us. Uh, when we got ready to rebuild the Wilson Street Bridge uh, in 2007-2008, uh, as I remember the story, you know, I think when we were done with it, 
We've got 1,400 pages of plans that were used in some form or fashion to rebuild that bridge. When we looked in the files to find the original plans for the bridge that we took out that was built in 1911, 19, and 12, we had 12 pages of plans for the whole bridge project in that particular time. So we've left the future generations with all kinds of documentation now so that when they do it again. But the streetscape program largely is a reaction of the city government to, uh, we do a, a community survey uh, every year and we randomly send out, uh, you know, between five and 700 surveys to people in town and ask them their opinions on a var variety of things. And the reconstruction and the re renovation and the kind of the restoration and the revitalization of the downtown over the last few years has been ranked repeatedly number one is the thing that people say they would most like to see the city government do. So uh, this, among other things that we've done in recent years, has been a reaction to that public reaction that we've gotten from the community about things that they would like to see us go forward and do. Uh, as a result of that, uh, I think we've had in the last, uh, certainly the last 25 years, a lot of money spent in downtown Batavia on renovations and renew, urban renewal. Uh, certainly the Waterford project up on North River Street, if those of you who are the old timers in the room can remember the days when we had CNF Forge up there uh, and the, the, the big drop hammer that used to make noise all day long. Uh, we had uh, that, certainly we had the old Alexander Lumber Company buildings, which is where Quarry Stone Pond now stands. Uh, we've had the, certainly the old Batavia High School building, which was tore down, you know, 13 years ago now for the construction of the new Batavia Public Library building. Uh, you know, certainly we built the Riverwalk. Uh, there's been a number of renovation projects that private investment has come into downtown Batavia and spent, and we have a commitment from a number of parties, including Batavia Enterprises and certainly the Marconi family. We've got a number of people right now that are telling us they're preparing to do other innovative and interesting things with their properties in downtown Batavia as we speak. So it would appear to us with the, with the River Street project, we've had a lot of, every vacant building over there now has a tenant in it. We've had people move in, other people inquiring. Uh, it's our hope that as we move that project forward, that we will continue to see kind of stage redevelopment going north on River Street from State Street going up a few blocks because there are going to be some opportunities, we think, in the near and far term to see some re significant redevelopment take place there. So I regard the streetscape program as just a major reinvestment and commitment by the city government in trying to enhance, number one, the values of the properties that are there already and certainly to encourage people to come in and renovate or build new or whatever their choice may be to do some other things. And I look at the number of people who have invested in downtown Batavia, certainly the folks that live in Waterford and Quarry Stone Pond, uh, you know, they spent some significant money to move into those areas. And I think certainly the streets that lead into their development and service them certainly should be brought up to a similar standard as, uh, you know, not only to that, but it certainly helps to sustain and promote the downtown. And we've had businesses show up here rather recently inquiring about doing stuff in downtown, and I think certainly the streetscape program helps to drive that. So that's kind of the impetus behind why we are doing all this. Uh, we appreciate your cooperation and your understanding as we go forward and do it. Certainly there are some pieces to it that are debatable that we as the city council and the committee that have been working on this have labored along, some of which I guess is gonna be enacted. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with everything that's been done. I certainly agree with the overall concept. Uh, I know the members of the city council have had divisions and debates about it, and I'm sure that will continue as we go forward and finish this off. But uh, this one this year is gonna be kind of an interesting one because this is the main street in town. We've obviously reached the consensus. We gotta keep the street open during construction and the staff's gonna to report to you how our plans are to try to do that. And I guess I just thank you for your diligence and your patience as we try to put all this together and we move this forward because uh, unlike the last time we tore the Wilson Street Hill apart and it was like two and a half years before we started it till we got it done, we're very optimistic we're gonna have this done right in a few months. 
And that's the that's the commitment I keep trying to beat on the staff is we're not going to have a long drawn out you know repeat of what we had 30, 37 years ago when we last time we did this. But uh, we are going to move forward. The project is staged and ready to go, and we're here tonight to kind of share with you kind of the construction timetables and the plans. So, no, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Mayor. Now I'd like to introduce um, Mill McGrath, our city administrator. He's going to go through our neighborhoods and uh, the streetscape process, how we came to today. Thanks, Cole. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to talk about the neighborhoods, but a little before that, you know, I'd like to put the streetscape into um, uh, this project into a, another context, if you will. Um, we were lucky enough to have the other taxing bodies agree with us uh, in the late uh, 80s that we, were, uh, that we could form uh, TIF districts in the downtown. Uh, TIF districts are a creation of the legislature, and they're basically they're, they're a financing vehicle for, to stimulate growth in the downtown and to um, stimulate investment of private monies in the downtown. And that can be done in a number of ways, either by direct developer contributions, uh, land acquisition, um, buying down developers' loans, um, loans, grants, or putting in infrastructure, which otherwise, if we were out in, a, out in the uh, hinterlands of the city, we would make a developer do. In other words, if you built a subdivision, we would require a developer to build all the uh, water, sewer, um, all the utilities. Uh, in a downtown, it's much more difficult, so TIF was also designed to be able to do that. Um, so that it would make it easier for developers to get past the uh, obstacles to successful development in the downtown. Um, when we passed those tips, we had some early successes. As the, the mayor mentioned, Waterford on the Fox was um, the first great success because not only did it replace some older buildings with, um, you know, some the buildings uh, full of energy, but it really met one of the goals, which was to have more people live down here. And we're glad to say we have its own neighborhood down there and it worked very, very uh, well. We paid for the street, the TIF district paid for the sewer, paid for the water, paid for all the utilities extending basically, which was a non-existent street uh, up to North Avenue. And uh, at that time, it's hard to believe, but at that time, building those townhouses along the river was absolutely seen as a commercial risk. Um, um, and that was that kind of um, partnership was needed to get over that hump, and of course, it's been successful. Uh, Quarry Stone Pond is a success. You know, I know because of the economy, it hasn't worked out to the extent that I think the original the developers wanted it. But the fact of the matter is that now we have this building there. This building is 44 units, and it will contain 44 families that live in the downtown. So the fact is, it's successful in terms of achieving one of the city's goals. It may take a little longer than we thought. Um, there were some other uh, projects that came to the city that were turned down because they were thought not to really reflect the values um, uh, of the community uh, as felt by the city council. I don't know if many of you recall, but there was a proposal to build a, I think a seven or eight story condominium tower right here on the depot pond. Uh, it was really intense and maybe we'd think about it differently now, but it was it went through a long period of discussion and negotiations and I think at the very last meeting, uh, the city council just felt that it wasn't appropriate for this part of town and to, it would change the natural uh, feel of, the, of the, uh, this part of the river and they turned it down. Likewise, before the river, excuse me, likewise before the library was built, there was a proposition that again went through a lot of uh, work and design and negotiations to put up a multi-story uh, senior project uh, where, the, where the new library is. And uh, at the end, uh, the city council determined that it just didn't fit into uh, what the city wanted to see there, as well as couldn't get along with the uh, developer, actually. I think it was just couldn't be worked out financially. So, um, you know, frankly, though, you can call them failures. I call them successes because we ended up with, we didn't end up with things that we didn't like. So, uh, but that's the life of working in a downtown in a, a TIF district. So the, uh, the city has embarked since then uh, trying to stimulate the investment of private capital in the downtown because the city cannot do it alone. As much as people like to think that, you know, government is all powerful, we do not have the authority to call up, you know, call the corporate center at 
Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, you, you name it. You name all the stores that we see in the surveys. We do not have the power to call them up and say, we want you downtown. Here's the space we want you to occupy. Or rather, here are the three buildings. We're just going to ask the people to leave, and you come and take that, that space. It's all driven by economics, all driven by their perception of whether they can make money there. And what we ran into was, as we've all seen over the last, what, 15 years that we've We've all changed, or our, our, the economy has changed to take advantage of the um, efficiencies of scale. And that's why we have Randall Road. We have the economies of scale. You have huge buildings out on Randall Road with, with even larger distribution centers that feed them. You have huge factories out in our industrial park and in Aurora and, and everywhere you see them, and they're fed by even larger truck terminals, and really there's huge pressure on small business. And this includes service industries, where 40 years ago you had nothing down along I-88. Well, now there's just, you know, huge towers of insurance people and, and data people and engineering firms, et cetera. So the, we're fighting in some ways against the way the economy has led us to develop ourselves in business. So um, Try not to bore you, but it's really complex and it's really on a, a large scale. So uh, the city has embarked on a plan to use uh, its TIF money and other devices to lure private capital here. And I can tell you that with the grants and the low, uh, low interest loans that you've heard about, um, we have had some success. Uh, Batavia has more of these kinds of programs than most other cities anywhere in northern Illinois. But the fact is that the city council began to observe that we still did not have these big successes here. We have a lot of building owners who do not put money into their buildings despite the fact that we start um, building up our, or tightening up maintenance regulations. We have some you know, business operators who frankly um, are running businesses that are basically surviving but not incredibly successful. And that happens in any town. It's the life, life of a city. But man is a social animal. You know, we like to be together. All the studies show that people's concept of their downtown is important to how they think of their entire community. Um, home prices have a lot to do with people's perception of the quality of the downtown. So the city council has tried to embark on a program to try to beautify the downtown, make it safe, and uh, make it beautiful for the residents. Several years ago, the city council saw that the TIF, uh, the life of the TIF was uh, beyond its halfway point, and with the, the, the crash, if you will, um, we're not having enough interest in the downtown. And so they said, well, we can't just sit here. We can't just sit here because our residents are saying we want to be downtown because we want to be together. Now, they don't say this, but I, I think this is what it's really all about. Um, so they decided that if we couldn't get all these new businesses down here, then at least we could make what we did have safe, walkable, well-lit, and if you had to walk from a parking area to a store, that walk would be a nice walk. And that's what the streetscape program has really been all about. If you do the streetscape, people will come. Where people congregate, business likes to go. That's exactly what happens. And already we've seen, I know people who have bought in Quarry Stone Pond, moved from their homes here in Batavia, and believe it or not, I think sometimes we're the last people to understand how we change. They believe that downtown has a really vibrant life. Uh, and I know it's, it, you're, it's always hard for, for, the grass always looks greener somewhere else. But downtown life is vibrant for a lot of people who really would like to move down here. So. The city council brought in some consultants, and one of the things that they noticed was that for a town our size, our downtown is actually physically very large uh, and spread out. One of the first things the city council did was to try and stop the, the sprawl, if you will, of downtown, and so uh, really set some pretty stiff boundaries, tried to put a stop to the uh, kind of the uh, the move of the larger houses on Batavia Avenue to be turned into offices, and in that way, they could make sure that as much energy as possible was focused into the downtown instead of kind of going out away from the downtown. Um, because the streetscape is kind of about the flip side of density. For years and years and years, I think we were used to saying density, density, evil word. I think everybody understands, or a lot of people are coming to understand that density is really good. 
If it's customers, it's really good. If you're a restaurant, it's really good. If you're a coffee shop and you've got 300 people that live within two or three blocks, density, really good. Not so good for traffic, you know, not so good for some other things, but density is good. One of the reasons why Kane County is different than DuPage County, and we like our lifestyles, but if you go into DuPage County, the density of buildings per square foot is much, much higher than Kane County, and there's an economic um, impact to that. So um, the consultants noticed that not only is the downtown big, but it naturally, uh, uh, naturally, um, is divided into areas which we really looked at as neighborhoods because we wanted people to identify with uh, going into certain parts of the downtown and identify those parts with certain activities. And so those, finally, I'm, why I'm here where I'm supposed to be speaking, and is to talk about the neighborhoods. Context is always important though. So the, um, I think the first neighborhood or the strongest neighborhood that came to everybody's attention was River Street. And it came to their attention because at that point in time, with even though there weren't too many restaurants, there were more, more of that type of business near each other than in any other part of the downtown. Additionally, there was an area where we still had a strong street wall, still had strong historic character of the buildings. And on top of it, well, and, and, and it was near the river, we had some adequate city parking at the time. And on top of it, if you go uh, north of State and Spring Street, there is land that is going to be ready for redevelopment sometime. So the city knew that putting money into that area would not only make that particular uh, couple of blocks strong, but it would be the natural jump off point for redevelopment heading to the north. So um, the uh, mayor appointed a, um, uh, a committee of uh, citizens taken from all over the uh, um, community to work with the consultants and advise them uh, about what they, what they thought, what their values were for the downtown. And that first neighborhood was determined to be the, the River District. Now, some people call it Restaurant Row, but the, the true nature of that is to be associated with the river. And we've tried to build some uh, design elements, uh, such as the railing bay, Taco Grande, that, that shows our relationship to the river. The, uh, Two other neighborhoods were Batavia Avenue, that's number one on the map, and number four, Wilson Street. These were seen as um, different from the other neighborhoods in that these were the streets that people who don't live in Batavia uh, go, th go uh, travel on all the time, and particularly Batavia Avenue, this is the street they, they see and they get their impression of, of our city um, from. So we felt that that was a very, very uh, important uh, street, if you will. And the same thing with Wilson Street because it's our only way to get across the river. So those two neighborhoods are going to have, uh, if you see the street lights that we've put on the bridge and will be continued up and down Wilson Street, those same lights will be along Batavia Avenue because we think that those two important streets need to be a little more, um, you know, stately or serious, if you will. Um, and show that they're really uh, the people coming through are, are in a city. So those two, they, those two streets will be basically designed pretty similarly. The other three neighborhoods really have a different feel because you're going off of the larger streets and into a place with a little more particular, um, particular activity. Neighborhood two is where we're in now. They sometimes refer to it as the institutional district because of the strong presence of the park district, strong presence of the city, uh, strong presence of the bike path, the river, recreation, and it's really the place, uh, the place where the majority of the community or the majority of times that the community gets together in large groups, it's down here. So this is a very special um, area. Um, then neighborhood five is on South Water Street and First Street and South Shumway. Now this neighborhood is has actually needed to be cut up because there's so much, uh, so much uncertainty about that neighborhood. The city council has decided that a second bridge would uh, be extended from Webster Street and down across First Street. And until that becomes a, a reality, we're not sure how that's going to develop. So at this point, South Shumway and First Street won't see a lot of attention. But uh, Water Street, certainly from uh, Wilson down to Main Street, um, that, that's the home of one of our other success stories, being Water Street Studios, you know, the home of 
basically 30 individual businesses owned by artists. It's now attracted uh, you know, a record store that was here in Batavia and left town and now has come back. It's attracted some uh, uh, media office uh, people and uh, I think that's ripe for redevelopment as well. So that is seen as a uh, potential arts neighborhood, if you will, and uh, um, something to be uh, looked at in the future. Um, the City Council uh, worked with the Citizens Committee and uh, in addition to identifying these neighborhoods, um, with their input has started setting up some priorities and of course those priorities will always be you know, reassessed as time goes on to see what the City Council thinks is appropriate at the moment. Um, I think there was unanimous uh, agreement that River Street was first. Um, because we had already started out with the bridge, uh, Wilson Street certainly second. Uh, plans are already done for Houston Street um, and that that will be discussed whether we will next, next go forward with Houston Street or look at the other uh, neighborhoods uh, in the very near future. Um, lastly, in addition to trying to make things, you know, beautiful and, and uh, um, and attractive, the streetscape program is also trying to take care of some infrastructure issues we have with the downtown, and I'm not talking just about sewer water. Uh, when we did River Street, as we did with the bridge, um, we ran oversized water lines to all the buildings so that when the time came for them to convert into residential uh, uses in the upper floors, they wouldn't have to rip up sidewalks, uh, interfere with people, uh, pedestrians and bicyclists and automobiles by ripping up the street. And every one of the buildings on Wilson Street already has a uh, large water main where they can go right into residential redevelopment for sprinklers if they want to. And Batavia Enterprises did just that with the building right down the block here. They had a couple of apartments and they couldn't have any more because of the codes. Um, soon after we uh, ran water line to the building, they did uh, put in sprinklers and now I think they have six or seven units of, uh, which is really wonderful to get some young people with some energy who like to spend time outside, like to spend out their time in coffee shops and do their shopping in the downtown. Um, so we're uh, going to continue to do that on this block of Wilson Street and wherever else we have the opportunity to, we'll continue to do that. And the last infrastructure piece is that um, the citizens group really felt that our downtown is really inaccessible to a large part of our population, which is just really a shame. I always like to use the, you know, do you feel you can send your 11-year-old downtown? And, and people felt that safety-wise, in terms of people in crime, no problem. But sending your kid to try and get across Route 31 is a whole other story. Um, as a side story, you know, we acquired the Baptist Church because originally the state wanted to take the jog out and make it one stoplight instead of the two stoplights. And when they really looked at it, not only would it not work traffic-wise, but they said that they would require it being designed so that a semi-truck could go like 35 miles an hour comfortably and we were going to end up with like an 80 foot wide right of way. It would have been just a, a, a horrible asphalt river and so you would never have some people have, feel that their kids could be comfortable enough, much less some of our elderly folks, to get across a street that wide with all these trucks there. So, uh, you know, I'm really thankful that that didn't play out and it, it actually is going to be an opportunity for us to redevelop. So the Houston Street project will include or is to include um, a new sidewalk, or not a new, a, a yeah, brand new sidewalk on the north side of Houston up the hill where there is no sidewalk now. It's a horrible thing for people if they do get across 31 to try and get down that hill. We're widening um, the sidewalk that's on the south side of that. We have grant money, or the uh, Wilson Street project will get rid of the funky little stairway that's at the corner of uh, Batavia Avenue at Wilson that's going to go. It's just going to be a ramp so people will be able to get down that very easily. When we do Main Street and Batavia Avenue, the uh, funky extra high two steps you have to go, get down to walk from the uh, block at Batavia Avenue down to where the funeral home is, that's going to be taken away so it's easier for people to, to walk. So uh, to me, access is an infrastructure issue. And I think you'll find that um, uh, there's going to be a big change here. And lastly, another uh, other thing that the Streetscape Project is going to do to bring us all together, it's going to give us the ability to actually spend time with each other. You'll see that at most of the 
corners that in the street seagate projects we've acquired easements from uh, landowners to enlarge the corners and in many of them there will be seating areas uh, at a minimum there will be a lot wider area so if there are people there with their bicycles or they've got their kid in their little haul along trailer behind them uh, it won't get really crowded at the corners but more importantly we'll have these seating areas so if you're you know, go, going up to that corner and you happen to come to the corner at the same time as somebody who you know, you won't instantly just have to go on your way because there's going to be this really beautiful little seating area or bench and you can say, hey, you know, let's, let's just wait a few minutes. Let's wait a few, you know, green lights and red lights and let's sit down and have a chat. And all these things are designed to um, let us be with each other a little more and have a nicer experience when we come downtown. So. Um, I, I think the concept of the neighborhoods is a really strong one, and um, I think that's basically it, more than it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Um, now I'd like to talk about the key personnel for the project. Again, my name is Noel Basquin. I'm the project manager for the city of Batavia. I'd like to introduce uh, two gentlemen you're going to see from WBK. They're going to be the team that works with C.J. Graves here. Who built, C.J. Graves is from Landmark. He's the contractor building the project. Uh, Phil Kazmaier and Annie Hagland from WBK. Phil will be at night doing the night work at, for the time being. Annie will be during the day. They'll be walking around, introducing themselves during the project. Um, if you see them, say hi. If you have a question, you're more than welcome to come talk to them. Uh, you know, anything from what's going on with construction, how do I get over to a business, if, depending if a sidewalk's closed, um, if you have a question about construction, you can ask CJ also. He's more than welcome to answer any questions that the public has going out there. Um, last, I'll talk about Joy Cotero um, from Main Street. She'll be sending out weekly updates. Um, if you did not sign in before you came in and put your email address, we'll be sending out weekly updates about the construction, um, so please do. Um, the scope of work, I think Bill touched on a lot of the scope of work that's going to happen on the project. There are going to be wider sidewalks. Um, he talked about the staircase being taken away at the northeast corner of uh, 31 and Wilson. I know that's been a, a, a kind of a hard point to get uh, people down, especially with strollers, ADA, when it comes to people with ADA issues. So we are going to tackle that you know, with new pro-WAG pro ADA laws. We're allowed to follow the natural grade of the pavement, so that allows us to take the staircase away and give ADA access. Uh, the pedestrian crossings are going to be brick. So with these brick pedestrian crossings, will allow you to allow the vehicles to see the pedestrian crossings much easier, so it'll be safer for pedestrians to cross there. Um, next down are bump outs, and there's been a lot of talk about bump outs. Bump outs function for many different things. First, the bump out allows for more room for pedestrians to stand at the corners. The next, it actually narrows the pavement for both when it narrows the pavement, it allows people to walk across the street faster. It also makes the, the street feel smaller so traffic slows down. Um, and then we also have the areas that there may be bump outs that are not crossings that have the ability to put landscaping in, which also acts as a traffic calming effect against slowing the traffic down and making it safer for our pedestrians along the way. Uh, ornamental lighting, Bill touched on it again. We are continuing with the ornamental lighting you see on the bridge all the way through the project, all the way up to, to Batavia Avenue. Uh, and the traffic signals, we are doing an interconnect project right now at Wilson and Route 25. Uh, you can see the, they're the same color as our ornamental lighting. They actually have the ornamental light standards on top. That, inter that intersection of Route 25 and Wilson is also interconnected with Island right now. And when I mean interconnected, it allows by computer-wise to adjust timing for the lights during the day as the traffic gets heavier. So when we interconnect it with Route 31, it will then adjust the entire corridor as the traffic gets heavier to allow more green time, which will allow traffic to move, run smoother through downtown and a little quicker. Uh, obviously, uh, the street itself during certain times of the day is very congested. It's, the road itself is at a service, uh, service level of an F, so it will get better, but it's, again, it's congested. It's not going to be, this is not the cure for the project. It's going to make the traffic run smoother and a little faster. Once we get done, um, as Bill also uh, touched on, again, water main is going to be replaced in this project. A new sewer main is going to be put, a new sanitary sewer main is going to be put on this project. Uh, again, we are going to put new services in the buildings that 
have potentially for sprinklers. So those buildings will get a larger service. So in the future, if they wanted to put apartments, we'll be having that. Uh, once all that is complete, we'll be reserving the roadway. Um, and then Bill also talks about the pocket parks. It, it, you know, the, here you can't really see really well, but we have pocket parks. If you go back to the back corners on the boards, we, are, we have blown up the pocket parks. They are, are going to touch all three corners, except obviously the northeast corner at Batavia Avenue and Wilson are going to get some type of treatment like a pocket park. And then down here at Island Avenue on both sides of Island Avenue, we'll get a pocket park. Um, we are actually having what is called a store hinge, which is being built now outside the project. Um, that relates to a um, Mayor Schelke's uh, father's store. Um, the columns were t uh, removed and they're going to uh, make a kind of a gazebo with those columns and a lot of history of Batavia. And that's going to be at the corner of Island Avenue and Wilson on the northeast corner. So uh, that will be done before the project starts, although well, that's not true either. It's going to be mostly done before the project starts. They're working on it right now. Um, construction schedule. i like to turn this over to Phil Kazmaier. He's going to go through the construct construction schedule, what's starting next week, and then what, what's to expect when it comes to night and day work. Thanks, Phil. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Phil Kazmaier. I'm the construction services manager for Willsburg Kelsey Associates, and I will be the resident engineer along with Andy Haglin on the project. As you, uh, you'll see on this coming Friday, May 3rd, uh, the construction signing will be installed. Uh, RCA signs are called RC, uh, Road Construction Ahead signs. Uh, they'll be starting installs on Friday, like I said, and they'll start saw cutting and removal items as in curb and gutter and sidewalks. It's not that they're going to remove those on Friday, they'll just start to saw cut those. On uh, May 6th, Monday, that's anticipated start of the work, nighttime work. The nighttime work will include uh, this new sanitary sewer that runs down the center of uh, Wilson Street. There will be uh, lane closures at that time uh, of the work in the evening. Evening hours are, uh, I'd like to touch on that before I touch on the daytime work, but the nighttime work is going to start like May 6th. It's going to run from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. They'll have to be off the pavement by 7 a.m. to avoid the rush hour traffic. Uh, during that time, we're going to install the sanitary sewer as well as the water main. And uh, there will be a slight delay from the nighttime work to the start of the daytime work of approximately two weeks. Uh, then uh, once, within two, uh, two weeks after May 6th, uh, they'll start the daytime work. Daytime work is the hardscapes we call it, curb and gutter, uh, brick pavers, concrete base course, and things of that nature. Uh, the completion date for this project is scheduled for the fall of 2013. And the com total completion date will be uh, the spring of 2014 with the landscape uh, items that will have to be completed because they're spring plant. That's it. I'd like to touch on two more things. Uh, the daytime work, if we have any type of closures of traffic, um, the only time we're going to allow any type of closure during traffic or just temporary closure of traffic is between 9 and 3. We don't want to impact any at the peak traffic. So we understand that between 6 and 9 and 3 and 6 during the day is when the peak traffic is. We don't want to have any traffic. Well, we're going to have some traffic. That's what's going to go next. The night work, we're going to be monitoring our night work. From, it goes from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. If it impacts traffic too much, we're going to have to adjust those times. We understand that right in the beginning, we're going to watch it. And if things happen, we will adjust those times. Next is pedestrian, uh, business pedestrian and vehicle access. Like I said, we are going to try to maintain business access at all times. We understand that you need to get your customers to your businesses. Um, this, it, this kind of construction does impact businesses due to the fact that there's, you know, people have to you know, figure their way out to get to the businesses. So we're going to maintain those access points as best as possible and have signage so people know where to go as best as possible too. Um, again, like I said, with pedestrians, we're going to have signs. Obviously, sometimes when the sidewalks are being ripped up, we may have to move some of the bastion uh, sidewalks into the parking lanes, but we'll have bridges to get into the individual businesses. We understand that you know pedestrians don't always know where to go. We're going to try to give you the best possible signage to go. If for some reason you can't find where to go, look for Andy or Phil or CJ and ask them if you get lost or look for myself. We'll be out there on a daily basis. Uh, again, vehicles, uh, we touched on the, on the on the closures, traffic is going to remain open during the day as much as possible. We may have some closures where it affects 
some storm sewer work or maybe some uh, sidewalk work, but if it becomes an issue where it impacts traffic too much, we'll have to adjust when we do it, maybe night work. But right now, we're trying not to impact traffic during the day. And the next thing is public parking. Um, this is kind of small to see. All the blue areas, and we do have a signboard over there with all the public parking on it. Uh, the blue areas is where the, generally where all the public parking is in the area. Um, the one thing I want to point out is we, hit, we made two 90-minute zones. Uh, the 90-minute zone is on the Wilson Street Hill from Water to Batavia Avenue. And the other location is the north half of Water Street between First Street and Wilson Street. Um, will be signed also as 90-minute parking. We're trying to give as much area or much as many traffic locations for those businesses so they get, their customers can get there. So by doing the 90-minute parking, it gets turnover. We don't have employees parking there or just people that are in the areas parking all day. There's other areas, as we're showing in the blue, we're going to sign those also, give you know, areas identification, public parking for the, day, for the all day patrons or people in downtown visiting friends or visiting downtown uh, river, the Fox River. Next, look, project communication. Um, project website, we have a web page. The web page is www.bataviaprojectstreetscape.com. We'll be putting up weekly updates along with information about the project as it goes along. There'll be some pictures probably. There are going to be the weekly updates. and. If there's any information where we have to, if something it gets changed in the project, it will also be there. Um, we also have a Facebook page. I'm not sure how many people know about our Facebook page. It's been out there since we did North River Street. Um, go there, like it. We have, no, we have updates all the time. A notification will be sent to you. We're going to be doing our weekly updates through Facebook. Um, communi some communication will be done through Facebook, the same communication you'll get in your weekly updates, but we're trying to get as much communication out there as much as possible. And then again, if you're not, sign up for the e-blasts. E-blasts are what the city sends out on a weekly basis with more information than just this project. Um, it gives about you know, events coming up to the city, uh, things that are going with public works, with downtown, with, with events. If, if you want to get more information about the city, Sign up for that, but you can also get information about um, the project that way. Um, starting this Thursday, we are having weekly coffee with the contractor. This is your chance to come down, uh, either you know, ask questions, uh, have comments, uh, voice concerns. It's every week at Panera at 8.30, except on May 16th. Um, it's in the back in their meeting room. They are, uh, they have a date, that date filled. We are going to send out information on what, where that meeting is going to be. We're looking at one of the other coffee locations in downtown uh, Batavia. Uh, the next is face-to-face. -face. Um, that's going to be either Andy or Phil, and I include myself. Uh, we're going to give 48 hours notice to all the businesses when construction operations is going to happen. It may not impact your business, but it may near, be near your business. We're going to still walk by and give you that notice so you know it's coming. Uh, again, and then there's the con contact information, which is the Streetscape hotline at 630-454-2777. Um, it'll be, we'll be checking for messages daily. Um, again, there's also an email you can send at streetscapecityofbatavia.net. We'll be checking that daily. So if you have questions, you can call in, you can send an email in. Um, we may not get you back that day, depending on how, when you send it, but we'll get back in 24 hours. Um, that is our presentation. Thank you for coming down. Um, come down, visit the project, bring your kids. I'm sure they'll enjoy seeing the construction going on. Um, and that's it. Thanks for coming. And any questions? Yes. Who's going to enforce the name of the department? Um, that is, we're working on that right now. Gene, I know that's the question. We talked about that today. Um, that will have to be something that the city itself will, inside will have you talking about. But we'll be checking that for sure. The signs are great, but, you know, You're right. And Bill, if you want to address that? Well, just so you know, Gene, we are already enforcing on River Street. We've given out, I think, 15 or something uh, warning tickets. That's all we're really doing is giving out warning tickets along with uh, uh, putting a map, giving a map to the people we give warning tickets to. We're, we're giving warning tickets so we can keep track to get some data on who some of the people are. Many of them are employees, but we're also giving them a map to show them where they can be. It's going to be the same thing. We're working with the city council to expand the authority of uh, community development so we, so we have a few more staff people that can actually be 
looking at this, but uh, particularly the 90 minute, uh, 90 minute area that we're really trying to focus on for your customers, we are going to enforce it in terms of warning people and we will be talking to the employers because the employers just have to tell their employees they can't park across the street from the business. That's the biggest scourge we have downtown, Absolutely. is the employees. And I, it's beyond us how the employers can uh, let, the, let their employees park and take other places with the customers. But, but uh, we are going to enforce it. We're, just, we're at that point, it, it is what it is. Yes? Uh, what will be the staging area? St staging area, and CJ, if I just look. The staging the area yeah. is down on uh, Shumway South of Wilson. Um, I believe cool. Enterprise. Yeah, I didn't know if you actually had. I know you were still it's in negotiation. Yeah, tomorrow, so. it's where the old founder used to be. That's where they're going to be staging at. They're also uh, their construction employees will be parking in that parking lot across from the foundry area. There's a open city lot down there that doesn't get used. Um, it's just during the day they'll be parking there, so they will not be impacting the uh, construction. I mean, the customer parking or the public parking areas. What is the purpose of the arch for River Street? <laughs> I mean, it's so expensive. It started off cheap, and then now it's out of sight. The gateway or arch for River Street is, a, it's a, it, it opens up the ability to, when you walk, you get out of that area, you see this arch, and you know you're entering a prominent area where it's at. The cost associated with it and how it was designed, um, the design, what you see is going to happen out there, was actually chosen, um, and there was an allowance for that sign to, to be installed. There was never, when, when it went through the concept, never a, an all-over all estimate put together for that. So obviously, yeah, it got more expensive, but that, that arch was chosen from day one. What is it going to do for anyone? For all that money? You know, the arch itself, it, it attracts people as they're going down Wilson Street. The first thing you notice is this beautiful arch. You're gonna it's gonna draw you to Wilson Street to go there and want to see what Wilson Street, I mean uh, River Street, and what it's all about. I mean, it's a beautiful street with that arch. The beautiful arch gonna happen in there. It's gonna draw your attention to that street and want to go see what that's all about. Yes. That, that seems like right now the trucks take up almost the entire street when they're turning and if there's a bump out there, how is that, I'm assuming you have taken all that in. We have. Um, the bump out, there is a bump out there as it is, as, as it is today. It's going to be a little bit wider, but the bump out's not going to change the actual radius for the trucks to get through. All right, my second question is, are we reducing parking on those? Good question. We are not reducing parking. We're actually adding parking. The parking on the hill is staying the same. Areas we're adding parking is by the McDonald's. That, that, we're lane, that lane, that extra lane that goes from Island Avenue to Water Street is being removed up to, to the Harris Bank. And in between McDonald's and Island Avenue, I think it's six spots we're adding in that area. And then we're also adding some spots on the other side of the street where in front of the uh, the bike shop where it used to be. All right, and you're saying that the lights are going to be timed better? What, what, the interconnect, yes, Batavia Adams is going to be interconnected with Island Avenue, which is interconnected with Route 25. And as a computer-based model, what they do is when traffic gets heavier, the, t the lights themselves adjust for the heavier traffic to get traffic through either quicker and smoother in periods of peak traffic. And we can adjust that as it does before. I'd, uh, there's, IDOT is very, if there is an issue with lights, they will adjust it, but it's all done by computer models. This is something that's a science they've been doing for years, so they've gotten this down to where they, I mean, if there's an issue, then, then the interconnect's not going to work. If, that, if this doesn't help this issue a little bit, and it's still congestion, that means the street, which I said, is, a, is, is already an F level of service out of A to F, it's failing. It's just not wide enough, not enough lanes. I like that little lane that lets me turn on water. That, that, the turn... 
there's going to be a turn lane starting at Harris. That's still going to stay there and go up to Water Street. So you will still have that ability to get over and make that right during congestion. You're just not going to be able to start down by Allen Avenue and do that whole. We are not, you know, we are not getting involved. The, this is a strictly a, um, a streetscape and a utility project. The water, the stormwater portion of it won't be touched under Wilson Street. And I think you're indicating that the sluice pipe that goes past where the bike shop is and goes down to the river, that if it has to be moved or if something happens with that will be, when that development goes forward there, that's when that'll be looked at. It will not be impacted when that happens. Yes. Island Avenue will not be. It's just it's just the hill portion between Water and 31, and then the north portion of Water Street between First and Wilson. Yes. What bikes will be involved with the It'll be the traffic signals from Route 31 to Island Avenue to the jog. Not down. It won't start at Main Street. Main is a few years away, but yes, it will start at Main once we do the Main Street project. Yeah, so they'll all be interconnected. Will it then go up to Washington Street? Um, it's actually, inter yeah, the jog is interconnected from Washington to, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, right now, Bata Island of Batavia is not interconnected at this point. It will be with this project. Yes. What does ITEB stand for? It's the Illinois Transportation Enhancement uh, program, which is a fund, a fund that the federal government gets uh, individual states to give out to projects that will enhance. You can use for enhancements for pavers, for um, wider sidewalks, for anything that uh, street lights, ornamental street lights, just to beautify your roadways in sections. Which neighborhood will be next? That's a good question. That's a city council question. Right now, we're looking at. Two possible areas. One is Houston Street, which the, the plans have been done already, and then the other is other locations would be Water, um, potential Batavia Avenue. It's just one of those things discussions that's going to go on in the future. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks everybody for coming again. Um, if you have any individual questions, if you want to walk around, look at the boards. If you want some refreshments. Uh, we'll be here as long as you guys want us to be.